Good day, grade 12s. Welcome to video number two, where we are now looking at phase one. Okay, so on what is page one, we see here they mentioned to us um, about the outcomes of phase one. We need to have a suitable folder or folder structure, focus question, short description of the task or problem or task definition. We need to sort out the questions. But what I like, what I've seen, and what I mentioned in the previous video, and we've looked at our topic and everything now, um, is the fact that they've broken this down into different tasks. So, for example, in phase one year, your first task is to create a suitable folder structure. So that's one folder for your with your name, surname, grade 11, pet, and then inside that you have a folder for phase one, two, and three, and they even tell you there, this must be a folder, this must be a subfolder, this must be a document, etc. So they're working on the assumption that it's going to take you around 15 minutes to sort all of that out. It should be less than that, but they're giving you that. All right. Then for task two, they want you to create your planning and summary document structure. So now inside that phase one folder, you're going to have a document. And that document is just a blank word document. Um, you can save it as phase one working document, whatever your teacher maybe advises you to do. But it must have a cover page, headings, and these are the headings that you need to have. You then need to have an addendum section and under the heading appendices. Uh, you also need to have the declaration of authenticity. Now, these two you'll find right at the end of this document. Then in task three, they want you to finalize your focus question. Now, this shouldn't take you long. Why? Because when we go up here and under our topic, what did they say you must do? They said you must choose one of these two tasks. Whichever task you choose, it's going to link up with this particular focus question. So if you've chosen task one, you're going to choose that focus question. If you've chosen the second one, you're going to choose that focus question. Okay, so that should sort that out. So we would have already done task one, task two, and in task three, like they say, you're finalizing the focus question. That goes under the heading focus question. And then the next heading is your task definition. Now, please, this always confuses people. And I've got videos related to the task definition showing you different examples as well of what um, it entails. But you are basically giving a description of what you are going to do in this task. What is the current situation? Um, what are you going to focus on? What is the outcome of this investigation? How are you going to go about doing this? And who is it for? So they give you about 45 minutes to do that. I don't see anything about words, but I'll check it in the rubric. Then task four, and this is the one that needs a little bit of thought because, yeah, they mentioned to solve the problem and answer the focus question, you need to ask more questions to help you find appropriate data and information. Now, if we scroll up here in this uh, pet document, what have they given us? They've also given us questions to help us. So I'm not saying you need to use like all these questions. I'm sure you can use some of them. But um, this is just a guide to assist you in this section of phase one. So they want you to create this whole table. And I think they do give you an example as well of what they want you to do. I think there was one year. Um, so you need to ask certain questions that are going to help you find out more info. What is important is that they mention to us you need to have three the questions on uh, from three categories, and you need to have at least 10 questions in total. Okay, so again, 10 questions on three categories um, and levels as well. Okay, here they mentioned to you, please take note, artificial intelligence tool, uh, tools, whoa, that was bad, uh, tools like ChatGPT, Claude and Copilot are not sources. So you cannot use that as a source. Um, you want sources for your 10 questions. And here they give us an example of what a website source should look like when you are doing this. Also, remember that you need to have at least two websites and one other source. So in other words, you can have 
10 questions and you've got to do this for like each one of those questions. Nine of them can be websites and the other one has to be a different source. I just want to see because I know they have given, uh, oh, here we go. Here's an example. All right. So here's a website that the individual went to. This was the author of the website, the article, when it was created, the date it was accessed. This is also what you need to do, which is the section up here, this one, and that is under task five for finding sources. In other words, where did you get the answer to the question? Did you go to a website? Yes. Which website? What's the name? When was the website created? Now you will come across some where they don't give you this info. You just put n slash a for not applicable and then that's fine. Then you also need to, for each source, record the following information. Right? Okay, that we mentioned. I'm talking about this here. Um, for th at least three of your sources. So you don't have to do this for all of them, but for at least three. So have a look here. We're back to this again. We've got the website, we've got the author, all of this. Then they want you to look at this for this particular source. So we're only doing this section for three of our sources. We're looking at the authority, the currency, the accuracy, the objectivity, the coverage. Right? And yeah, they tell us with this particular one, the article is supported by the S2S group with its uh, contact details. Is it current? Is the information current there? Is it accurate information? You know, is it fake news? What is it? Is it objective? Does it explore everything you need to within the particular topic? So, yeah, please do check on that. Then task six, you need to engage with and use uh, information and data. They want you to save a copy of each of the website that you intend to use in an appropriate folder process and summarize the information to extract appropriate info that's relevant to your informational requirements. So, for example, you maybe gave out a, um, a Google form. If you ask people for their name, like, is that something that's relevant? No. Okay. So you'll only take out that which is relevant. Um, and you're going to be using that in phase two when you start um, creating a spreadsheet as well and then they just want you to check everything before you hand it in make sure you tick off this checklist to make sure you've done all of the stuff and that then comprises of all you need to do with phase one so let's just go to the rubric to do a final run through so the organization of the documents that folder structure that's four marks having a focus question that's three marks there we go the task definition needs to be 200 words plus minus okay your questions that's got nothing to do with the questionnaire that's in that in those tables at least 10 questions on three different levels okay um you carry on with your 10 questions your bibliographical information for those uh, questions in other words those sources how many sources do you have evaluating those sources Providing a summary in your own words to each one of those sources as well. That should get you all the marks for phase one. Right. As I've said before, if there are any specific questions on anything inside of phase one, please leave those questions in the comment section of this video. Thanks so much and I'll see you in phase two.